this week on Facebook. If you see your son, if you see your daughter not acting the way they should be acting, the greatest thing you can do is to get on your knees and to start lifting them up in prayer. <laughs> who pray through and it manifests in your life. Say amen, saints. Can I hear amen? And that promise to them was the Holy Ghost. Right? Right? Somebody say, oh, I'm waiting for the Holy Ghost. You don't have to wait for the Holy Ghost. He came on the day of Pentecost. Somebody say hallelujah to that. You don't have to wait for the Holy Ghost for you to speak in tongues. He's right here, right now. Anybody at any time, you can pray in tongues because the Holy Ghost is already here. Amen. Say amen. amen. Say amen. What you're praying through right now is the promise of your healing, the promise of your health, the promise of your prosperity, the promise of your call. You pray it through and you stay there long enough until it manifests. Oh, I like what it says. It, it kind of... The Holy Ghost came as a rushing mighty way. How many of you are ready for your miracle to rush through your life? Hallelujah. How many are ready for your car to rush through your life? For your house to rush through your life? Well, you're going to do what the church did and just pray through. Say amen. Now, go to John 21. Go to John 21. This is Jesus after he is resurrected. Now, Peter and the disciples, funny guys, after the Lord was crucified and died, Peter said, I'm going back to fishing. And he went fishing, didn't he? I don't know what kind of fisherman he was. Because the scripture says when Jesus said, when, when Jesus appeared on the beach and said, Children, have you any meat? Have you caught anything? They said, No. And the scripture says, The Lord said, Cast your net on the right side. There's a right side to catch fish. Praise God. Somebody say, Hallelujah to God. And when they did so, they enclosed a great multitude of fish. And John said, He whom the Lord loved, right? John said, It's the Lord. Now, the Bible says the next thing, and Peter was naked. Who goes fishing naked? I mean, that boy was something else. He, then he put his clothes and jumped in the water. Lord, good job. He didn't appear before the Lord naked. Amen. And he came before the Lord. And the Lord said to him, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Simon, son, son, of, uh, son of Jonah, do you love me? Yeah, Lord, I, lo I love you. Feed my sheep. Simon, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Right? Feed my sheep. How many times did he betray Jesus? Three times. And the Lord talked to him back three times. Equal father. Praise God. And the Lord said this. Peter, let's go there. Let's read there. The book of uh, James, a uh, book of uh, John, rather. Look what he says here. Verse 18. Do you have it? Let's read verse 18. Are you ready, saints? Verily, verily, I say unto you, when you were young, you gird yourself and walked wherever you would. But when you shall be what? Huh? When you shall be what? Old. You're young now, but you shall be what? Old. So right there on the beach, Peter got a promise from the mouth of of the resurrected Savior that he would live to be an old man. He wouldn't die a young man. He would live to be an old man. In Acts, the 12th chapter, Herod beheaded James, and he took Peter, right, to bring him forth the next day after Easter to execute him publicly. Peter didn't worry, right? The same night in which he was about, the next day his head would be decapitated. What was Peter doing? Sleeping between two soldiers. If you knew that your head was going to be decapitated the next day, would you be sleeping? 
Huh? Are, are you listening? He was, but he was sleeping. Why? Because he had inside information. He knew something that Herod didn't know. He knew that Jesus said, hey, Peter, you're going to be dead when you are old. And when Herod had a death sentence over his life, he was still a young man. So Herod, you can do whatever you want to do. You can sign it. But I got a promise from the mouth of Jesus. Say amen, saints. But how did that promise come to pass? Now watch this. What were they doing? It says in Acts 12, chapter, let's go there. Let's go there. Glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say glory to Jesus. Mm, verse 5, verse 5, verse 5. What happened in verse 5? Peter, let's read verse 5 together, please. Peter, therefore, was what? Kept in prison. But what? Prayer was made without what? Ceasing. What does it mean to pray without ceasing? It means pray nonstop. Huh? Did, did you see that the church, when one of their guys was taken out, James was decapitated and beheaded, and they were about to take Peter. What did the church do? They tapped into praying without ceasing. What were they doing? Praying through, travailing in prayer, so that there'll be no loss of one of theirs. Aren't you tired of the devil taking your stuff? Aren't you tired of the devil taking your, your belongings? If you're tired of it, Begin to lift up your voice and begin to pray. Glory to God. What does it mean to pray? What does it mean to pray? People say, well, prayer means to talk to God. Well, that's wonderful. Prayer means communication with God. Well, that's wonderful. But what does the word pray and what does the word prayer mean? The word pray or the word prayer was a legal word that was used in the court. Just like you had the word pleading. Pleading doesn't mean to beg. It was a legal word, which means how do you plead your case? Are you hearing me, saints? The word pray literally means to intervene. And prayer makes, means to make intervention. Now, let me explain this to you. That's the only way I can simplify this for you. I've got two brothers. They're both younger than me. I'm the oldest in the family. I've got two brothers. Well, my brother's name is Bruno. The second one is Bruno. And the last one is James. I'm one year older than Bruno. Now, you know with a name like Bruno, we've got trouble on our hands, all right? And he's one year younger than me, but he's bigger than I am. And that boy could rearrange my face anytime he wanted to because he's bigger than I am. James is five years younger than me. I used to slap the fire out of this boy. I'm mean, like, yeah, whatever, man, just. I mean, I used to beat him up. But, <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, when he got all this, he gave me a good hiding too. <laughs> but Bruno, he was something else. Now, my brother Bruno, he was working. We were teenagers. We were saved, but we were heathens. He was, uh, he was working in a, in, a, in a clothes shop, and uh, he, would have to, he would go to school on Monday to Friday, and then on Saturdays he would go to work. And he kept and saved his money, and he bought himself a, sneakers, a pair of sneakers, which was brand new Puma, uh, good-looking tennis shoes. I was like, man, I wish I had some of that tennis shoes myself. But I didn't have any money because I wasn't working, right? I said, can I borrow it? No. <laughs> Come on, man, let me borrow it. No. You go work and get your own shoes. I don't know, whatever. And I had to go out one Saturday, and I figured I had this plan that he goes to work, he leaves the house at 8 o'clock, gets to work for 9 o'clock, and he gets finished at 6 o'clock, and he'll be home by 6.45. So I had this plan. When he goes that Saturday, all right, at 8 o'clock, I would get up and take the tennis shoes from underneath his bed, put it on, and make sure that by 5 o'clock, that's plenty of time, right, that he will be back home at 6.45. I will have the shoes back underneath the bed in the box by 5 o'clock. 515, uh, the latest. Well, I took that tennis shoes. I wore it. I was walking down the street. And my friend said, man, you got a cool sneakers. I said, yeah, and it, don't it look good? I mean, I was, I was pretending like it was mine, lying like a dog all the way, right? And so what happened, I came home 5 o'clock. Like I said, I would. I had my plan. I was executing my plan. 
I was like, well, I still got about an hour and a half for Bruno to come. But I don't know what happened that day. He came home shortly after 5 o'clock, and he burst through the door. I was standing in the kitchen. And when he opened that door, I was standing by the kitchen door. And he, now he looked down, and he saw his tennis shoes on my feet. I, I, I was busted. I didn't know what to do. What are you doing with my shoes? I, 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 I borrowed it. Listen, you got to understand my brother. When my brother gets angry, he's, one of his eyes goes cockeyed. I mean, he goes, he, he was, his eyes was all over the place that day. Before I could say anything, man, he reached out and he punched me. He punched me. He hit me in my ear. I don't know if it was the right one. He hit me in my right ear. I told you I was standing by the kitchen door. When he hit me in this ear, my, my other ear, my left ear hit the door. I didn't know which ear to hold because when this one was in pain, I'll try to hold this one, then this pain will be shooting on that one, right? Have you ever been so angry that you felt a heat went by your face? Some of you don't know. I don't, Pastor, I don't know. You're lying. You know what I'm talking about. You get so angry that you felt a heat went by your face. I said, this is it. This kitchen is not big enough for the two of us. Today, somebody's going to die. I'm going to get up and lay my hands on you, and you will not recover like the Bible said, but I will kill you. I mustered up all my energy in my left hand. I said, why left hand? Because I'm going to, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to lay one. I'm going to give him one. Right? And I came. And just when I was about to make a punch, I mean, it was coming smooth. And just when that, my fist was about to connect with his eyes, I'm going to make you real cockeyed <laughs> after, after I hit you in the eye. And as quick as my fist was going towards his face, my mother stepped into the middle. And as quick as my fist was going that way, I, pull, I don't know, miracles are miracles. I pull it back. Why? Because if you hit your mother, your father will kill you. What did my mother do? She stepped in the middle. She made an intervention. She stepped in the middle to stop an attack. And that is what prayer is. It is putting God in the middle to stop an attack that's coming your way. When you don't pray, you are an open target for the devil. If a church doesn't pray, that church is an open target for the devil. If the parents do not pray, then the family is an open target for the devil. But if a believer, if a preacher, if a church, if a, if a parent begin to pray, you put God in the middle of you and your problem, and the devil will see it. He'll come one way and flee before you seven ways. Say amen. The church began to pray. God sent an angel to deliver Peter. Right? Now look in your Bible. If you want your life to go in a more positive, joyful direction, then begin with your health. You know, in your healthy, life is more enjoyable all the way around. Faith Lift International Church and Pastor Glenn Arecchion can help you take those first steps. Bring your family and friends to the 2012 Easter Conference at Faith Live International on Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. Pastor Glenn invites you to attend Healing Through the Blood of Christ, a special healing and miracle service with guest James Arecchion on April 6th at 7.30 p.m. and April 8th at 10.30 a.m. That's Good Friday and again on Resurrection Sunday. Healing Through the Blood of Christ at Faith Lift International Church. 125 North Lakeview Drive, Louisville, Kentucky. Call 502-523-4407. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. What was the church doing? Praying without what? Ceasing. And what did God do? And delivered Peter, broke the chains, right? Broke the chains. And what did Peter do then? He went back to them. What were they doing? Look in your Bible here. Look in your Bible, please. Oh, he met, he's about to meet Rhoda, right? Look what he says here, verse 12. And when he had considered these things, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered, what? Together, what? Praying. 
They kept on praying. They kept on praying. They kept on praying. They kept on praying. They kept on praying until Peter showed up at the door. Are you listening? Did you see that? They kept on praying until Peter shut, uh, showed up at the door and began to knock on the door. Hey, God has delivered me, and I'm here. And Rhoda was like, <laughs> she was in a state of shock. She did not even open the door and ran back and said, Peter's out there. They said, you're crazy. Oh, they prayed through until the miracle was knocking on the door. Praying through is to pray until your miracle starts knocking on your door and says, I'm here. Can I hear an amen, somebody? You don't have to be looking and waiting for that miracle. Aren't you tired of waiting for your miracle? It's about time for your miracle to come looking for you and knock on your door. Amen. Say amen. amen. They prayed through. They prayed through. Intercession. Praying without ceasing. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, let's go to the book of Mark. Thank you, Jesus. Mark, it's in the New Testament. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> it's right after Matthew. <laughs> now, Mark, the 14th chapter. And when they were come to the place which was named Gethsemane, he said to his disciples, sit here. Well, I pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, the same trio. And he began to be sore amazed and began to be very heavy. Here you go. He had this burden. He had this pressure. In fact, put your finger here for a second. Let's go to the book of Luke. Let's go to the gospel of Luke. Thank you, Jesus. The Gospel of Luke, the 22nd chapter. Look at verse 39. It says, And he came and went as he was wont, meaning his habit, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples began, <coughs> followed him. He says, Pray here, right? Can you see that? Pray that you do not enter into temptation. Now, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and knelt down and began to pray. He said, Father, if you be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Right? And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven and strengthened him. Look what he says here. And being in an agony. Read that verse, please. And being what? In an agony. What did he do? He prayed more earnestly. Right? He prayed. Now, where was the agony? Well, well, let's go back to Mark, the 14th chapter. He says in verse 34, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. My soul is under pressure. But now what's your soul made up of? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. How many of you have ever felt before you go into prayer that your emotion was all crushed? Your mind. See, the battleground is where? The mind. The reason why we don't pray through and we start getting depressed it's because our mind loses that, loses, uh, we lose the will, the capacity in prayer. When you lose in your mind and you lose in your emotions, if you can't harness that emotion, it takes faith to do that. He knew, he knew that he was about to be separated from his father. That cup that he was about to drink was not an easy cup. He said, Father, take this cup away from me. But there was no way, because there's no way you can bring redemption without drinking of that cup. Hmm? But nevertheless, not as I will, your will. What did Paul says, Epaphras is praying for you that you may stand complete in the will of God. Here is Jesus praying that the will of God be done. Not my will, but your will. Now, he was on a watch. A watch is three hours. So he prayed for one hour. Now let's go back to Mark 14. So he said, my soul, verse 34, is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry here and what? Watch. Now, how long is the watch? Three hours. And he went a little forward 
And he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, that this hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, Daddy, Daddy, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but what you will. What was the problem here? What was, what, what was, the, what was the pressure? He didn't want to do it. You see what I'm saying? He didn't want to be separated from his father. Huh? The scripture says, who for the joy that was set before him, the cross was not a joy. The cross was pain. The resurrection was joy. Say amen, saints. And after he cometh, now watch this, and find them sleeping. He says, Peter, could you not watch with me for one hour? So how long had he been praying? One hour. How long is it watch? Three hours. So in his three-hour watch, he was praying for one hour under pressure. And he comes back, hey, can't you pray for one hour? Peter, what did Peter say? Lord, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hmm? But look what it says here. And he went again, verse 39. He, again he went and prayed and spake the same words. Why did he speak the same words? Well, that's unbelief, brother. Are you, going, are you accusing the Lord of unbelief? Why did he pray the same words? Because he didn't get through the first time. Do you understand that? He didn't get through the first time. So he just kept, he brought it back again. He brought it back again. Now, remember when Peter, uh, when Paul had a thorn in the flesh? He says, for this thing I besought the Lord how many times? Three times. Three times. Why, why three times? Because the first time he didn't, get th he didn't pray through. Praying through is praying until you get the answer. Are you listening? Praying through is staying there long enough until you get the key that will unlock the door. Jesus said, ask and you shall what? Receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. The Greek text says, ask and keep on asking and you shall receive. Say amen, saints. And he went back again the third time and prayed. Look, let's read that again, please. Look what it says here in verse 4. And he cometh the third time. He cometh what? The third time. Right? Can I hear any man, saints? Now listen very carefully here. He prayed through. That's the reason why he didn't, that's the reason why he did not compromise. It takes faith. It takes boldness. It takes courage to be going through what you went through, what he went through and not to compromise. Some of us, the moment they pluck uh, one of our hair, <laughs> I surrender. <laughs> I quit. Right? I mean, they did all kind of things with him. But he just, what, what, now, did you notice after he prayed, when he stood before Pilate, what did he do? Nothing. He wouldn't say nothing. It is as you say. The scripture says he maintained a good confession before Pilate. What was a good confession? Saying nothing. Why did he say nothing? Because he's already talked to his father. He's already prayed through. It's settled, man. It is settled. That's what I'm talking about. There are some things. See, he prayed that the will of God would be done. We need to pray. You need to pray that the will of God gets done in your life. Say amen. If you cease like Daniel, he's 70 years, we should be out. Why are we not out? There's a problem here. What I read in the book is not a mirror. My life is not a mirror of what I see in the book. All right? So he set his face to seek the Lord. When was the last time you did that? Hey, Lord, you said, hmm, I'll just give you an example. You said, Lord, that we will live in goodly houses. Isn't that what the Bible says? And you find yourself in a one-bedroom apartment, broke, busted, and disgusted. Well, then go to God and say, Lord, this, this is what the book says. What did Moses do? He lifted up that rod before God. He lifted up the word. The word is our weapon. So I might have through the word and prevail. And bring it to God. And stick with that word. Stick with that word. Stick with that word. 
pray that word, believe that word, confess that word until that word becomes a reality in your life. And you make up your mind that you're not going to bow down. You make up your mind that you're not going to surrender. You make up your mind, bless God, come hell or high water. Devil, if it's a fight you want, a fight you're going to get. But devil, I want you to understand, when the dust settles, God and I will be standing up and you will be under my feet. When you make up your mind, that's how you're going to be. You would have resisted the devil and he will flee from you. Say amen, say. Say amen. amen. Lift up your hands and say, I will pray through. Will pray through. Say, I will never surrender. Amen. What did Jesus say? Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Real men know how to pray. Real men never cave in in prayer. And no man is greater than when he's on his knees seeking the face of Almighty God. Hallelujah. It's not your preaching that will deliver you. It's not your eloquence that will deliver you. It's not the clothes that you wear that will deliver you. It's not your education that will deliver you. It's your prayer that will deliver you. Say amen. Say amen. Come on, lift up that hand and say, I will pray through. Now sit this after me. Say, having an altar stand, I will stand with my loins girded with the word of truth. Amen. With the belt of the word of truth. That keeps you stable. Praise God. If you want your life to go in a more positive, joyful direction, then begin with your health. You know, in your healthy life is more enjoyable all the way around. Faith Lived International Church and Pastor Glenn Arecchion can help you take those first steps. Bring your family and friends to the 2012 Easter Conference at Faith Live International on Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. Pastor Glenn invites you to attend Healing Through the Blood of Christ, a special healing and miracle service with guest James Arecchion on April 6th at 7.30 p.m. and April 8th at 10.30 a.m. That's Good Friday and again on Resurrection Sunday. Healing Through the Blood of Christ at Faith Lift International Church. 125 North Lakeview Drive, Louisville, Kentucky. Call 502-523-4407. Thank you for watching Faith Lift with Pastor Glenn Arecchion. For more information or to contact us, call 502-523-4407. Come join us at one of our services at 125 North Lakeview Drive, Brooks, Kentucky. Or visit our website for more information, glennarecchion.org.